Hi, my name's Russell and I'm the Director of Curatorial Research and Exhibitions here at National Gallery of Singapore. Hi, I am Xingyi. I am a curator here at the National Gallery of Singapore. We are the co-curators of the Anthony Gormley exhibition. Anthony Gormley is an internationally renowned sculptor, born in the UK in 1950. He's known for his sculptures, public artworks and installations that explore the relationship of the human body to space. Often using his own body, and as well as other people's bodies, um, as a base, he explores the relationship between the human body and nature and cosmos through a range of materials and as well as forms. You may be familiar with his work, Angel of the North, which is in Northern England, which is a gigantic angel-like sculpture made of iron uh, standing at the top of a hill. Uh, or Another Place, which is a series of 100 sculptures that are placed along a beach near Liverpool in England that look out to sea. And you might be familiar with his first exhibition in Singapore, which was held at the Institute of Contemporary Art La Salle in 2005. This exhibition consisted of a multitude of miniature clay figurines that covered the entire gallery's floor. It spoke of his collaborative practice together with artisans in China, and as well as the idea of what form really means to many people. Other than Asian view, other works of Gomli's can be found around Singapore. They can be found in Marina Bay Sands, Capital Green, and as well at Stamsey Hill itself. So please go around and have a look. Really excited to take you today on a curator's tour of Gormley's new exhibition here at National Gallery Singapore, which features a major new commission, Horizon Field Singapore. This work is the fifth in a series of major commissions as part of the Ing Teng Fong Roof Garden Commission series, uh, which the gallery has been running over the past five years. This series invites leading international contemporary artists to respond to the site on the gallery's rooftop, its place in Southeast Asia, and the idea of Southeast Asia as a crossing of multiple cultures and histories. Previous artists invited for the series include Cao Fei, Charles Lim Yi Yong, Rukrit Tiravanich, and Yan Vo. Anthony Gormley is the first artist who was not born nor lives in Asia, but we felt that Anthony's unique approach to sculpture in public space brought a new perspective on the site and the place in Southeast Asia. The way he works with his audience and with the architecture really connects um, the living experience of Southeast Asia in relationship to his sculptures and installations. This edition of the Ng Ting Fung Roof Garden Commission is particularly special. For the first time, it will consist of the commission as well as three other artworks by Gomli spread around the gallery itself. These works, Clothes 5, Sands and Fermen, form an entire series of Gomli's exploration of the human body in space over the last four decades. These works help to complement Horizon Field Singapore in looking at a wider context of how the human body is used in Gomli's practice. In Horizon Field Singapore, the participation of your bodies is essential to completing the experience of the work. Altogether, these four works form a mini retrospective of Gomley's exploration into materials, formal and spatial dimensions. Here, we have an inkling into his development over the years in looking at the relation between human body, space and time. These three sculptures, Close 5, Sands and Fermen are located at the Coleman Street entrance, Level 3 UOB Southeast Asia Gallery entrance, and as well as the Supreme Court foyer. In our discussions with Gong Lee, he mentioned looking at sites that would be of interest to him and as acupuncture points within the gallery's buildings. With that in mind, we place the sculptures in public spaces around the gallery where the encounter with the audience would be incidental and of surprise. With these sculptures placed in public spaces, we hope you would enjoy and stop and look at them as you encounter them going through the gallery. So without further ado, we would like to take you through the three sculptures in the gallery and journey upwards towards the Ng Teng Fong Roof Garden Commission, Horizon View, Singapore. The first work you encounter when entering the gallery is Close 5, which is placed on the floor of the Coleman Atrium. Cast in solid iron from Antony's own body, the work weighs 600 kilograms, uh, which is about seven and a half times the weight of a human body. The work is lying face down on the floor, 
uh, which draws attention to our relationship to the Earth and the way that we're pinned down by gravity. The horizontal um, position of the sculpture is not what we expect when we come to see sculptures. We usually expect them to be standing upright. So our relationship to the work is quite surprising when we come across it. When we look at the sculpture, the production process is evident in that we can see the joints in the different parts of the body, as well as four sort of stipples on the back of the form, uh, which show where the body was broken off during the casting process. The artist has also referenced that the, the forms almost look like nipples and that the relationship of the body to the ground is like our own relationship to Mother Earth, and by extension, drawing on a tradition of mother and child imagery in Western art. So by looking at this body sort of um, lying on the floor, the artist invites us to think about our own relationship to the Earth, which has become so much more fraught in this time of climate change and uh, ecological crisis. The work also invites us to think of our own bodies as mediators between the gravitational pull of the Earth and the centrifuge of a spinning object in space. So we can then think about our relationship to the cosmos, which then makes us consider our own relationship to the universe around us. Sense is located on level 3 of the Supreme Court building at the entrance of the UOB Southeast Asia Gallery. Here you will see that the work is installed in the corridor together with some of the other works from our permanent collection. The work itself, Sense, is a block of concrete with different points of hollowness formed by a wax casting of Gomli's body. This process is called the lost wax process, where Gomli makes a wax casting of his body and then is placed within this concrete. The wax is then steamed and melted out of the concrete, leaving behind only the space on top of the block of concrete and as well on the side of the concrete. Here, Gomli is not just speaking about the minimum space that a human body can occupy. Within this block of concrete, we can see how a human body can speak of absence and loss. It is also an evident marker, an indexical marker of Gomli's body at that particular moment of time. The concrete block itself is marked by five cavities, one on top which is the widest area around the human head across the brow, two on the side of his hands and two at the bottom of his feet which unfortunately is not visible to the audience. Here, he, it forms one of the human body crouching down together. And if you look through the widest cavity of the head itself, you get to see how it interlocks and interlinks with the other cavities. Gomli speaks of leaving behind some evidence of his production process, and he mentions that he has left behind some shrink wrap during the process itself. And if you happen to see any, it might be of interest to you. When looking at this work, for me, it evokes a kind of personal emotion of pensiveness and a kind of fondness for the human body. One that we lived in every day, but not noticing the passage of time as it goes. With this work, Sense, Gomli speaks about his body at that one moment in time and it's enshrined in concrete for the next couple of decades. So I ask that you consider how does a human body move according to time? In the choice of material concrete, Gomli notes that this is the material that has been used to build most of cityscapes around the world in the 21st century. During that point of time in his practice, Gomli was looking at the idea of body as building. Here he alludes to it through the choice of material concrete that has been used to build most of the architecture in modern cities itself. He's also like making the allusion of the question as to like how our bodies in relation to the bigger population, forms the bigger environment. Here, other than the use of material, and as well as the absence of the body that's marked within it, Gomli is also asking us, as people, as individuals, how we relate to the wider society and environment where we are, just as the work, building blocks of the society. Ferment is suspended above the grand staircase in the Supreme Court foyer. 
So the work from 2007 reflects a shift in Gormley's practice, which began around the 1990s when he started to use digital technologies in the production of his work. Ferment used fractal and algorithmic processes to develop the complex framework for this sculpture. The work is constructed out of stainless steel, uh, which is another different material that Gormley uses. And you've noticed in all the other works in this exhibition that he uses non-traditional sculptural materials, uh, moving away from marble and bronze into concrete, cast iron, and in this case, stainless steel. The work reflects Gormley's interest in quantum physics as a meeting of mind and matter, and connecting in some ways to Buddhist philosophy, which inspired him as a young man and continues to inform the way he makes his sculptures. If you look at the work, you can see the form of a figure, which is also based on Gormley's body, uh, which is in action, it's sort of walking in space. Um, but it's not a solid form. It's like uh, Gormley tried to create it almost like an energy field. And to create that effect, he was inspired by the form of foaming bubbles, which create a matrix in which the body is either appearing out of or disappearing into. As you move through the exhibition, you see the body represented in different ways, from close five as a solid figure, to sense in which the body is represented as a void, and then ending with ferment, in which the body is neither present or absent, but really just a field of shimmering energy. Being suspended in the stairwell, you can encounter ferment in several ways, either from below as you walk up the stairs, from the mezzanine where you look directly into the sculpture and you sort of see the form front on in a way, um, or from the side when you walk into the Southeast Asia galleries and see it through the large window. The figure you see, which is based on Anthony Gormley's own body, is a walking figure, a figure in motion. Anthony has talked about sculpture as something that's active rather than passive and is constantly responding to the environment around it and therefore pushes against the idea of sculpture as being something fixed or static. For this iteration of Ng Teng Fong Roof Garden Commission, we have Horizon Field Singapore. It is an installation consisting of 48 rings of aluminium. As you know through the three sculptures, Anthony's attention to material is very profound. At this point of time, the use of aluminium is deliberate. His use of material is intentional, and it is an exploration of his to look into the history of materials. In this case, man's aeronautical developments in terms of technology and material. Here the work allows and invites you and other visitors to co-create the experience of going through the artwork. The human body that you see represented in the three sculptural works in the gallery has devolved and the human body is now yours, which is a collaborative experience between you and the artist. As you go through the artwork, you might find yourself maneuvering through different directions. You might have to bend, you might have to dive, you might have to even lift your legs to cross over certain coils. Here, the artistic intention is for you to challenge the everyday norm of your human body walking in the straight line, in a straightforward manner, through space and through time. Whereas in the artwork, you will have to shift and you will have to adapt to how the coils move around you as much as you around them. For this work, there are many viewing angles of the work. Some of them partial, some of them complete, and some of them from a height. You can see bits of the installation from the Coleman entrance at the fringe of the ceiling. Or you can approach it from level five, straight across looking into the CBD district, or from the other way around looking against Raffles City. And there are also two viewing points from above on level six. So for this work, we invite you to have a look at the different perspectives that you can see the work. Also, at the same time, you might also want to pay attention to the shadows that the rings form on the floor, which shifts according to time. Horizon View Singapore was realized remotely through a very strong collaboration between the National Gallery Singapore and Anthony Gong Lee. Here, the discussion of the work started two years ago. And as you know, two years ago, this was before the COVID pandemic. With the pandemic happening, it required strategies to shift with regards to collaborative practice, with regards to understanding of materials. 
a lot of our discussions revolve around an attention to materials, for example, such as the polymer bindings that support the aluminium rings, had to be tested against the Singapore environment in terms of humidity and UV exposure. At the same time, the number of rings on the platform itself had to be specific in terms of weight, in terms of density. Here, the work is unique to us as it was conceptualized design through discussions between Anthony and the National Gallery, as well as other engineers, paying attention to the architecture limits and purview of the National Gallery itself. So the work starts out from Anthony's earlier developments. It started from a drawing um, called Clearing, where he was mapping out his movements in space in a circular motion. From then on, it moved into a material form uh, installation in, called Clearing that was recently installed in the Royal Academy, London, and then at New York in Brooklyn called New York Clearing. He speaks about the perceptual horizon that is in the building itself. Like you can see that structurally speaking, the loops of aluminium coils actually create a kind of intervention into the rectangular space where we have in the National Gallery Singapore with all the buildings around it. The circular cores also speak of his interest um, in religious iconography, such as um, in Western iconography, you would see it as auras around saints and holy people. And in Hindu mythology, um, the rings of fire around Shiva Navaraja itself. This work is specific to Singapore in a way that it takes into consideration of the space in the National Gallery Singapore, which is a platform that is surrounded by buildings such as um, the Supreme Court, um, the Padang, the CBD, as well as Raffle City. The height, the weight, the dispersal of the coils were thought out very carefully by Anthony. Um, he also had a working model done up in his studio in London and testing it out in terms of durability before offering it as a proposal to us. He made sure that a model would be done in London for his own testing to understand how it moved. Here, Gomley's Horizon Field Singapore, which consists of aluminium coils, interrupts into the vernacular language of the architecture around the National Gallery Singapore. This material is usually used for aeronautics and engineering. Here you see Anthony's interest in non-traditional materials carried through, as it is echoed as well in the tree sculptures in the gallery. The Anthony Gormley exhibition runs until the 30th of October 2022, so we hope that gives you ample time to come down and experience these extraordinary sculptures, and then maybe come back again and again. Please also look out on our exhibition website for the range of programs that we'll be having during the course of the exhibition. From both of us, thank you for watching.